It's the Battle of Baltimore, and it takes place Saturday. The Tiger Football Report starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome to the Tiger Football Report. I'm your host Spiro Marikas along with the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose. And this Saturday at 7 p.m. the Tigers will travel to Hughes Stadium to take on the Morgan State Bears, a rivalry that was started back up last year and uh, coach I know that it's very important for both of these universities to meet up on the gridiron every season. It is this is um, something that I'm really thrilled about I think you know the series has been on and off for decades and there's been some really good games along the way but I think the attitude and aspect of each institution where it sits currently really makes this for the right time for this to happen that I you know football can what it can do is shine a spotlight on everything that is awesome about your institution, especially academically. And these are two very fine, renowned, highly regarded, long time academic institutions. And they have great historic history in their football program. And all these NFL Hall of Famers. So as everybody's talking about this, this is the one chance for the, in the year where the entire metro area can claim college football as their own. They don't have to travel anywhere else that we can, we can celebrate these two great schools in our hometown. And if this gets done correctly and continuously, then it will grow. And it will grow in a way that we will be noticed nationally for what we are doing in our local community. And I've said I'm not going to be happy until it's at M&T and we're selling it out. Well, I'll tell you what, both universities are growing rapidly also. I mean, you, you drive down uh, Hill and Road right now, and Morgan is building a humongous building. You drive down York Road, Towson is building a brand new science, humongous baby. science mm -hmm. building. So these are two universities that are growing. Now, right now we are the, I think we're slighted, stated as the fastest growing state institution, and, uh, which is cool by me, I think, it's, I think it's awesome. Each school is acknowledged for their past successes, but each school right now has a bullseye on them for what will be their future successes in their growth. And I think that the fact that we're playing this game allows everyone to see it. Anyone who wouldn't be paying attention to a big new science building, all of a sudden, like, wow. Towson's going to do that, that right. building the Morgan. You know, Morgan's going to do that. And football brings that opportunity to the table. And in the bigger picture, with everything that goes on in the world today, this is something that can tie our entire community together. And God knows we need more of that. All right, let's talk about the football team at Morgan. New head coach, Ernest Jones, who was the defensive coordinator. He says 
they're going to be tough and physical on defense. Everybody wants to be tough oh. and physical on defense. But on offense, they're going to run the ball, and he doesn't care who knows it. They're going to run, 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 and put the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Morgan always has playmakers. <laughs> they do. Uh, I can tell you on the, on the front end of what he's saying. As the defensive coordinator last year, he's an extremely good defensive coordinator. He put a defense together that held a lot of teams that were offensive powerhouses down all year long. Scoring totals are down, total yardage are down, rushing totals are down, and it's because of the defense. They're returning nine starters. A lot of these guys have experience. They played us very, very tough. So worst offensive output all year last year, and uh, we'll have our hands full. They also, um, again, the, the, on offense, though, they're, they seem to be young. New quarterback, mm -hmm. new running backs. That could be something that maybe you guys can exploit. There's a couple new skill positions where the guys are n not as experienced as the dudes that came in from last year. And even up front, there's a spot or two. But they're big. They're very big. And watching their film, they're very big. And the guys that did play are very fast and very physical. And I don't think he's afraid to run the ball. The fact that they have Jones now as their new head coach, does that kind of we got to throw out the film from last year because we may not see much of the same thing on the offensive side of the football. Obviously, on defense, since he was running the defense, they'd probably be the same. But offensively, schemes could be different. I think it will be. But in the world that we live in today, there really aren't any secrets anymore. And social media and kids are close and kids are talk and kids talk all the time. So we're extremely multiple on offense which serves our defense very well schematically. They get to practice against a lot of things. So it's not like they're going to be totally shocked by any big time change. We'll have to make some adjustments along the way. And that's, that's kind of what we do. All right, they have a couple of guys vying to be their starting quarterback. You have a couple of guys vying to be your starting quarterback. And it's been a battle all, all uh, summer long. I know coming out of training, the spring ball, and you made no bones about it, you were not overly pleased with Ryan Stover coming out of uh, spring ball. You said it's been a completely different guy here during training camp. It's true. that the, um, Where we were as a team coming out of last fall, we were poised to actually do some really good stuff in the spring. And uh, to do that, Ryan would have had to take the reins in that. Uh, he did not have a good spring, and as such, we didn't get as much out of the position as we wanted to by the end of the spring. And it was kind of disappointing. It really was, because we did make a lot of strides in a lot of different places. Uh, now, for whatever that is, there are two sides to every coin. And uh, if we're going to speak specifically on Ryan, Ryan Stover is not only a new man, he is the guy that we recruited. He is the one that we have always wanted to see. And he had a tremendous summer. Not a good summer, not a, not a better than average summer. He had a tremendous summer. And if Ryan Stover is the guy taking snaps, I'll be completely comfortable. He had competition. Both new guys. One experienced other places and one not experienced. Jeff Miller, freshman from California, highly touted freshman from California. I know you love this young man, uh, not just as a football player, but as a human being. And then you've got Tom Flacco, who gets a lot of publicity because of his last name mm -hmm. and who his brother is, especially in this town. Sure. How did it all shake out? <laughs> well, Jeff is, is advertised. He's really big. Uh, when you see him in person, you'll know he's really big. He's Hide very, him from Pat Scary. <laughs> He would hide you from Pat Scary. He's so big. He would shadow you. Uh, had a good camp, but as a freshman, the, the transition from high school to college was pretty impressive for him. And his comment was, I learned more football in three days here than I learned in three years in high school. So he's still catching up mentally. Tom had a very, very good summer and a very, very good camp for a guy that was just picking up a brand new system. Uh, he's, he's an intellect, he's a, just a natural human being. He's a very, very smart, yes, I know that'll blow everybody away that football players are really, really smart, but especially a Flacco. But yeah, he is, he's a really, really smart guy. And uh, the, he, the kids took to him really fast because of who he is. Ryan Stover and Tom Flacco in their truest forms are the same. They are quarterbacks. That is not a position you play. That is a way of living your life. And when they are both doing what they do naturally, that's who they are. And uh, made for a hell of a camp. Made for a lot of fun competition. And when, as a head coach, when you sit back and you have to see it with a much bigger perspective, you have to watch how your team responds to these guys. And this is the only time I've ever been involved in something like this where they're completely comfortable and they don't care who it is. They just know we got a good quarterback and we got more than one of them. You didn't answer my question. How did it all shake out? What's the final result? We had great. Uh, 
Oh, this is the one that airs. Okay, so I'll just, um, I guess it'll be the first time in the, in the metro area where the quarterback from the professional football team and the quarterback from the local college team share the, last, the same last name. That there's, and it was tight, it was, it was tight. And, and the reason that I can smile and do all this, because I know Tom's gonna be, he's gonna do a great job. But if you think back to the years that we had success, how did we get to the national championship game? Peter Athens played his face off for two quarters and got hurt. And it was the backup quarterback that led us to the national championship game. If you can say what you want about whatever Morgan Mahalik was or wasn't, the guy who led us to all those wins at the end of the year was the backup quarterback. So it's not something that I ever want to be involved in. And the less quarterbacks you play in the course of a season, the greater your odds are for success. But I know that I got two starters that the team can count on. And that's an incredible, confident feeling. All right, year 10, as excited now as you were year one? <laughs> uh, more so. It's different, completely different. What, 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 what this place was 10 years ago is not what it is today, and it won't be what it is 10 years from now. And I'm, honestly, I'm grateful that I got to come home and play a part in moving the needle here, that we did stuff that people said could not be done, and I like my roster. I like it a lot. I like the guys on it. I like the coaching staff, and they like each other. They, they love each other. And this team's got a chance to be special, really. We can't wait. We can't <laughs> wait. Game one of 11, Saturday, 7 o'clock from Hughes Stadium. Gordy Combs and I will have the call for you on CBS Sports Radio 1300 starting at 645 with the pregame show. Next week, Ben Rosenbaum will be sitting here for me as the Tigers will prepare to take on Wake Forest for the first time ever. And Coach Ambrose and Ben will talk to you on TowsonTigers.com next week. So, for the head coach of the Tigers, Rob Ambrose, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for watching another edition of the Tiger Football Report. And as always, go Tigers.